Good morning. Nice day here in New York City. Now, I don't know what day it is. 8th of June, I think. So, somebody asked me, what about books on relativity when I was talking about your physics library? Your physics library 1, the books on the shelf. Your physics library 2, the grand, what is it, Grand Torino or something. And physics library 3 is about relativity and other books. Well, I didn't go into relativity too much when I was talking about the books, simply because I don't think it's a great way to learn relativity. Most of them are terribly badly written. The only ones that I found to be well written are very old. I'll talk about those in a minute. So, these are books on relativity, but I'm not doing any more library presentations, so I'll include some other books as well. And then I'll show you how to go through some papers. That's how you learn physics. Through papers is advanced physics. And relativity, well, we'll, we'll get rid of the bad ones first. Now, the worst book, and why people keep recommending this to me as a mystery, even, even when you go to the index and you look up relativity, you can't find it. General relativity, it's not in there. When you go through the book, it's not in there either. It shows up kind of in passing when he's talking about Riemannian or Riemannian geometry. There's George Bernard Riemann. So it does a little bit of Riemannian geometry, but not in the language that Einstein knew it. What's wrong with what Einstein knew or didn't know? Or Pauli or Eddington or many of those other people early in the field of general relativity. General relativity was a generalization of special relativity to include accelerated frames of reference, be they gravitational, rotating, or a real acceleration. All right, so it came out in 1915, and special relativity was 1905, so that's 10 years later, all right? Basically, it's an application of Riemannian geometry physics to physics. It might be wrong. Okay, that's a big argument, that's a big discussion. Anyway, let's get rid of that one first. We got rid of this, you don't, people, Buy it because they like it happen on their shelves. I bought this in London years ago and I still have it. Had to get it across the Atlantic. Another one that's always recommended is this one. Relativity is in here, all right. I mean general relativity, but only in the first few pages. Then after that, the rest of the book, this much, consists of applications gravitational waves, cosmology, you know, the background black body radiation, and it's very good for all those things once you know relativity. If you know relativity, general relativity, when I say relativity, I mean special and general, right? If you know relativity, then you can buy this book. But to learn relativity, you can learn that from my lectures. You can also learn general relativity from Let's say Carroll's, Sean Carroll's lectures on the web. But my favorite is Tuft. Now this is an introduction to black holes, but within this he also has an introduction to relativity. He has another paper. I can't remember the name of it exactly, but you'll find Tuft has a great introduction to general relativity in about, let's say, 10 pages. Tuft, he can't be beaten. He has a Nobel Prize for dimensional regularization. So that's a paper you can download on the web for free. Another book that if you know relativity, that is general and special, really well, you could probably learn stuff from this book. But you cannot begin as a novice and read through this book and expect to understand relativity afterwards. Right? It's mathematical, it's abstract, and it doesn't hit the nail on the head. It misses it by eight miles. The key points of general relativity that you can transform away into flat space, in other words, jump off a building and become an inertial coordinate system, is not in here at all. And that's the key to general relativity. It's not there. Wall, I think, was Wheeler's student, by the way. Now, a very good book that you won't get through, you know, in a short lifetime, is Lightman Press, Price and Tchaikovsky, it's a very old book, you know, like 40 years, years old or more, 50. But it's problems in general relativity and special. And they're very well done. 
with solutions. You can actually learn general relativity from this book. Not only that, you can master it. It goes into all the differential forms and things and manifolds that you don't need, but not too abstractly, with real calculations. The real abstract work, work on with including uh, manifolds, forms, and whatnot, is given by Yvonne Choke Bruhat. Now, an easier one that if you want to, if you're insisting on working through manifolds and forms, uh, is by Schutz. This one would be, be expensive, and this one would be not expensive. I guess that's it. Now, there are a thousand books on special and general relativity. So with them awful. And there's, the market was flooded even recently. Even John Carroll has a book. He has lecture notes that you can download for free on the web. They're as good as his book, if not better. I would never buy his book, and here's the reason why. $167? No way in the world. I could get four good books for that price. I'm not buying Sean Carroll's book. I don't recommend you buy it either. Now, everybody tends to have the large scale structure of space time, that's the Hawking Ellis book, on their shelf. You won't learn relativity from this. What you will learn from this is mathematics, okay? You will learn the mathematics surrounding it with, you know, set theory and subspaces and spaces sub, God knows what. In there, gosh, I actually see a metric down here for real, but you will not see the Schwarzschild metric written in here. Real. You won't see it. So it's not a book I recommend unless you want to go abstract and you want to feel highbrowed. Now, the classical theory of fields is all mixed up. They have electromagnetism and everything in here. But believe it or not, chapter 10. Um, ten, anyway. Chapters 10 and 11 give an excellent introduction and thorough to general relativity. If you can get this one cheap, I don't know how much they cost. I'm sure you can get, get it reasonably inexpensively. I got this for $10 in the street. I would recommend it because you do a lot of uh, electromagnetism here, especially, you know, Leonard Becker potentials and accelerated charges and things like that are covered very well. And, you know, Landau and Lifshitz don't ever make mistakes. And they don't use three words where they can use one. Now, the classic early books on relativity were as follows, in order of being early. I guess along came Eddington first. And Eddington's book on general relativity is pretty good, written just after the theory was first published in 1915. So I'm giving it maybe 1920 or something. Now, Arthur Eddington was the guy who went to South America and observed uh, the bending of starlight during an eclipse. That's who he is, the same guy. So he was an experimentalist and he was you know, a keen relativist. So, I don't have it. <coughs> it would be very expensive if you could find it because it's a collector's item. 
Wolfgang Pauli, when he was around 20 years of age, just a few years after the theory came out in 1915, Wolfgang Pauli was a clever guy. He wrote the definitive work on general relativity. If you get your hands on it, try and put it on your library. I wish I had all those. I have none of those on my library. Max Born. Max Born cannot write a bad book. He's not capable of writing a bad book. I have not seen his book on relativity, but he has one. When I say relativity, I mean special and general. Max Born would be highly, rec to be highly recommended if there was one. And he would have written that, you know, before the 1950s. A very good book, which I did see once and read aspects of it, is by Rindler. Rindler has a space named after him, Rindler Space. It's a very important uh, space. It leads to a very important metric. So Rindler's book would be a classic to have on your shelf. If you don't want to have these... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have allergies. It <coughs> If you don't have those, if you don't have these classics on your shelf, um, I don't really recommend any of the modern books at all. Now, a relativist from the 40s, 50s and 60s, and he died at about 105, he's from Dublin. He has two Nobel Prize winners in the one family, one for chemistry and one for literature, John Millington Singh, playboy of the Western world. or is it? Whatever it was, anyway, John Millington Singh wrote plays. And he got a Nobel Prize for it. Now, uh, Singh, J.L. Singh, has inside in the cover of his classic book on general relativity, which is very mathematical, actually, for the time, but it does not have differential forms and manifolds in it. It's in the language that Einstein, Pauli, and Eddington knew, the language of the original theory ordinary tensor analysis, tensor calculus. And in, on the first page, he has a dedication, dedicated to JP and JJ, who never bought more than they sold. That's what's written on the inside page. Now, JP is John Power, makes whiskey. And JJ is John Jemison, makes whiskey. So he dedicated the book to those two whiskeys. That's JL saying. Like I said, this is probably quite a good book, but it's too expensive, and you can get his ordinary work for free on the web. So now let's look at other books. I said we do other books because that's not enough for the full presentation. Something I always like to have is anything that Feynman comes out with, such as this one. Actually, one more on relativity. If you want to go um, mathematical, this is Schutz, the same guy who has relativity, just doing the analysis on manifolds. If you want to learn that stuff, go ahead and learn it. Don't bother learning it with respect to general relativity. Learn it with respect to the mathematics that's in it. But as far as relativity is concerned, it doesn't matter. A couple of Feynman books that are nice to have. This is just um, deriving the theory of gravity using ordinary geometry. In this book, Feynman says that things that are elementary are not necessarily simple, and you will see why. When you have to go real elementary, elementary means using as few principles as possible. He says that right inside here. It's not a great book, but it's nice to have it. I like to have anything to do with Feynman on my shelf. So this is mechanics. This really focuses in on lectures, but the very first chapter, if you could master the very first chapter on statistical mechanics as written in here, then you'd be quite good at it because all statistical mechanics really does is it sets up the generate the uh, partition function, and from the partition function you can derive everything else. If you look at the partition function that I used when I was deriving uh, Planck's radiation law, you will see what I mean. I got a continuous one and a discrete one. So that's in here. And once again, Feynman doesn't make things easy. <clears throat> Another book that I like to have from Feynman is his view of uh, 
quantum mechanics. It's a different view, right? And it's quite simple. It's based on diffraction, a diffraction pattern and analyzing what happens when photons go through one slate or another. The path integral formulation of quantum mechanics is a very deep uh, you know, and tricky topic to learn. Now sometimes people have to learn group theory. This is not an easy book to learn group theory from. You can get easier ones, but it's extremely inexpensive, $15. And it's the classic written by Morton Hammermesh, right? It's mostly a reference. It's hard to learn group theory from it, but to have it on your shelf at $15, I'd say that's okay, because it's a classic. Now, when it comes to gauge theories, this book is abstract. Gauge theory is, ju is just a type of transformation. Uh, gauge theory just means quantum electrodynamics uh, uh, the, and grand unified theories. That's basically it, of particles and fields, right? Gauge theories. Now, Chris Quigg, he uh, wrote the book uh, Gauge Theories of Strong, Weak and Electromagnetic Interactions, Chris Quigg. Oh, by the way, this is J.C. Taylor. There are two Taylors. I don't know what the initials of the first Taylor is. This guy, as far as I know, is at King's College, London. Chris Quigg, he's a particle physicist with a attention towards experimental results. This is great for bringing in experimental results. Very often when you read field theory books, there's not a mention of cross sections or anything experimental, but that's what's covered in here. But he leaves gaps. For example, he brings in the idea of the alpha, but he doesn't say what it is. And he keeps using alpha and alpha and alpha. And suddenly you realize, oh, wait a minute, this is the fine structure constant. And he does the same thing for a G, and he uses it all over the place without telling anybody that the G is um, the strong interaction constant. So, that's a weakness of the book. If it has a weakness like that, you'll have others. Sidney Coleman, okay. In his later years, diabetes affected him and slowed him down a bit. But in his productive years, Sidney Coleman was at Harvard, by the way. This book generated dozens of papers. Just the book alone. Um, I can't remember now exactly who, but many people got papers straight out of this book, Aspects of Symmetry by Sidney Coleman. It's extremely inexpensive. Um, anyway, it's a classic. It's something to have on your shelf when you have time to buy it. You, but it's the kind of book that you read a little bit today and another little bit tomorrow. Another book that's like this is by Victor Weisskopf. <laughs> Essays on physics, it makes very nice reading. There are no equations in it, hardly. It just talks about speculative philosophies and things like that. Coffee table reading, Victor Weisskopf. However, he does have a book called on, on nuclear physics, Blatt and Weisskopf. Uh, yeah, um, what is that equation that's derived in there for cross sections for nuclear reactions? I can't remember it just yet. But anyway, that's a standard work. I don't have it. I would say it's quite expensive. <clears throat> Classic book to have on your shelf, Nuclear Physics by Max Born. He hasn't written a bad book. This cost me 15 pounds in London 40 years ago. I would say it's quite expensive to buy now, but you could probably get a paperback version on Amazon or a secondhand one. Always go for the inexpensive one. This book cannot be found, but it is a classic by Predrag Satanovich. Um, the title, now I'm missing the title page. I actually got it off him and I got the rights. I asked him for the rights to photocopy it and he gave it to me. But it's a way of looking at Feynman diagrams, purely diagrammatically. And it's very funny. Uh, Predrag Satanovich became a specialist in, I think, either catastrophe theory uh, or chaos theory later in life, but he was a field theory, 
field theorist first, I got a letter from him when I was a student. <clears throat> now that's all I have to say about books. You learn a lot of physics from classic papers. Classic papers are the paper that Feynman has on quantum gravity. Quantum theory of gravitation, I think it's really the first of quantum gravity. The first real paper on quantum gravity is actually by R.P. Feynman. And it's actually based on a talk he gave. It's extremely complicated. He doesn't expel out all his results, but I know he's done them at home because he won't, won't write down something without having done it. There are two classic papers on quantum field theory and curved space. One is by Parker and Toms in 1984. And another one is by Bunch and Parker. This one I love. I've gone through this dozens of times. Bunch and Parker and Parker and Toms. Actually, I, I, you know, I have a definitive work myself with Bellucci uh, where we do a quantum field theory on curved space in a special case, working out the effective action and renormalization group equations. You could get your hand on that paper because forget if this is based, this is the work in here is done for our wormholes. Forget the wormholes. The way that quantum gravity is done in here is spelt out really nicely. I did it myself, and I remember, and I made it as simple as possible, because in those days I had to make it so that I could understand things. There are many other books we could talk about. I run out of time, I hope that, okay, I didn't clarify it. The reason I didn't go into the relativity books when I did my other two lectures, some guy asked me this question, is because I don't like any of them, right? And you want to keep things as short as possible. Print out short things from the web, the web, lectures on quantum, on general relativity, they're all over the place. For example, Sean Carroll, his lectures are better still. Gerhard Tuft, they're wonderful lectures on general relativity. When you've mastered those, then you can buy any of the big waffly books. I don't really care. I'd go for Pauli's book or Rindler's book if I were you. But I wouldn't, you know, if you really have to have Misner, Korn and Wheeler and, um, um, what's the other one? <clears throat> and Weinberg on your shelf. You have those on your shelf if you want to do cosmology. Even you won't get cosmology out of Mr. Thorne and Wheeler. You will get it in here. It's full of ex exact calculations. How the guy did this book and being a par particle physicist, but this wasn't his expertise, I have no idea. But it's, you know, really thoroughly written. It would take years to go through, not to mention write it. Okay, maybe I will do, um, a presentation next time on special papers. That will do us for today.